Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in on this fine Wednesday morning to the Guadalupe Radio Network, KTH 910 AM. My name is Dave Palmer, and I am an out, out and about in Hearst today with a live remote broadcast, and Dr. Kyle Eberlein and his wife Martha here at Mid-Cities Dental, where we are broadcasting this morning for the next hour. We're going to be talking about the North Texas Catholic Men's Conference, of course, with Dr. Kyle about Mid-Cities Dental. Uh, they've been a sponsor for many, many years. We appreciate them very much. He's my dentist. He's my wife's dentist. Dentist. In fact, he's done some work on, on my wife. Uh, his uh, um, his colleague did uh, recently, and uh, been very pleased to at Mid Cities Dental. Uh, also, uh, we are going to talk about Martha Eberlein's experience going to El Paso on a mission trip. Okay, and so she's going to join us here in about uh, 15 minutes or so. And as if that wasn't enough, uh, YCP Fort Worth Young Catholic Professional uh, Fort Worth uh, member. Uh, Brian Thatcher. He's also the database manager at uh, Good Shepherd Parish in Colleyville. He's going to talk about his experience with the young Catholic professionals. You know, Jen Baugh comes in re uh, often and talks about this amazing group that's helping young people in their 20s and 30s remain in the faith, learn the faith, and also get excited about uh, being disciples of Jesus Christ. And then uh, stay tuned because at the very end of the hour, I'll introduce you to a gentleman, also a Good Shepherd parishioner, Matt. Vaughn, who is a pilot who travels around the world, as most pilots do, and uh, he doesn't just travel around for his job, he goes to mass in all these various countries, including China, including various countries in Europe, and he has uh, a real broad Catholic experience, universal experience of the Mass throughout the world. You know, I've been to Mass in maybe two or three countries in my life, and so he's uh, really got an interesting perspective, especially in China, where he can give us a little bit of insight into uh, the somewhat complicated uh, situation with the church in China. So Matt will join us at about quarter till and uh, support great sponsors like Mid-Cities Dental. All right, so that's what we're doing here, and let me get right to our first guest. Dr. Kyle, Kyle Eberlein is... Uh, one of the owners here, and like I said, a sponsor, and his website, midcitiesdental.com. And with him is his friend and my friend and fellow sponsor as well, Bob Duane. We had a live remote at My Mutual of Grapevine here <laughs> recently, so uh, I'm among friends. Uh, gentlemen, good to see you. Thanks for, uh, I, I don't know about thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm, you're, you're, this is kind of your place, Dr. Kyle. Well, so. well, we're glad you're here, Dave. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about uh, Mid Cities Dental in more than 30 seconds, because people hear you and uh, Martha on the air for 30 seconds at a time. Tell us about your practice. Well, you know, um, first of all, I just, you know, Dave, I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited about being a sponsor for a long time now. Uh, can't uh, can't talk uh, good enough about how great the radio is and the patience that we have from the from the radio. In fact, I want to just briefly say that, you know, what's interesting, I find with uh, with Brian and Catholic, with Catholic uh, young professionals, is we've been getting a lot of new patients all over Dallas, Fort Worth, that listen to the radio, and they're in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you used to think, oh, it's just probably older people that listen to the radio and stuff, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's young people that are coming in, and they're excited about their faith. And so our practice has really been growing quite a bit. And with our uh, huge Catholic population that come here, a lot of young families. Now, let me ask you a dentist question, okay? Because uh, no, typically with regular medical issues, the older you get, the more medical issues you have. I mean, that's just kind of the way it yeah. goes. So if you're a heart surgeon, you're probably not treating a lot of 10-year-olds. My experience with dentistry is that it's kind of the opposite. I had many more dental issues, uh, at least cavities and things like that when I was a kid, and fewer as an adult. Is there a certain age where people tend to have more dental issues? Well, you know, what's, what's really interesting, what's happened is that through preventative dentistry, a lot of kids are not having the issues that they had, let's say, when you and I were kids. Uh, what's really happening is the elderly population are the ones that are getting the majority of dental problems. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it is side effects from uh, medicines or side effects from different illnesses, cancer treatment, things of that nature. A lot of it deals with... Uh, dry mouth problems and sleep apnea and all, all kinds of stuff. It's all so. interrelated, isn't it? Uh, all right, well, if you want to be like me, and gosh, who doesn't, right? You want uh, uh, Dr. Kyle Eberlein, and uh, you're a you're, uh, co-dentist here. What is her name again? Well, we have Dr. Bijal Patel is here with us, and then we also have, uh, we've been blessed with another office now called Dayspring Dental, where we have another good Catholic dentist, Dr. Jackie Clavin, working with us. Oh, wow. So Expanding, we have, huh? So, yeah, we have patients now coming not only to her 
Amherst, but also to Bedford. And, so. and people do say, hey, I heard your spot on the radio. And we, we and I'm going to get Bob Duane in the conversation here because three days from now, there's this uh, incredible event. And I'm so excited because this thing's almost sold out. And so if you're a man 18 and over and you want to go to the North Texas Catholic Men's Conference, boy, you, pro you procrastinated long enough. You need to get, get on the ball and get your tickets. And I'm going to be the MC. We've got some great speakers. We'll talk about that in just a second. I love the spots that you have on the radio because you talk about St. Apollonia. And I know people have heard about this. At the end of one of the spots, St. Apollonia, pray for us. It's just so amazingly Catholic to be asking for the intercession of the saints. Tell us about St. Apollonia. Well, you know, uh, you know, St. Apollonia was a martyr and uh, when in Egypt uh, at that time, I think uh, uh, Philip the Great at the time. And um, anyways, in her case, she wasn't willing to uh, change her faith to paganistic type things. And, and then, of course, uh, uh, had all her teeth removed forcefully, unfortunately. But she martyred herself by throwing herself into a fire rather than converting or trying to do what the pagans wanted to do. So she was very, very devout in her faith. And um, so she became the patron patroness of dentists. Mm. And um, so as a Catholic office, I just feel like, you know what? I'm not afraid to live our faith and promote our faith. And we're going to do it at work. And we're going to do it at home. So, All right. So St. Apollonia, please pray for us. And again, I, I went on uh, Wikipedia and uh, did a little research on her, but uh, you've pretty much covered it as far as the history of St. Apollonia. So thank you very much. Dr. Kyle Eberlein here. And we are at Mid-Cities Dental during this hour, and we're broadcasting live. A lot, lot going on, a lot of great guests to get to. But we want you to come on out here and visit us. Uh, Martha has brought uh, Chick-fil-A food and orange juice and coffee. Uh, 556 West Bedford Ulysses Road, Hearst, Texas, 76053, between Hearst View and Precinct Line in Hearst. Bob Duane, the owner of My Mutual Mortgage, along uh, with uh, Dr. Kyle as well. And a uh, big event coming up here in three days, St. Patrick's Parish in Dallas. And things are going really well, isn't it? This is exciting. It's very exciting, Dave. Thanks for having us again. And that's the parish you grew up in. It is, yeah. I was, MC, a, that's I was an be... altar boy there. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be sentimental for me, I mean, to be there again. That's awesome. Well, we have 51 tickets left. And, <laughs> and normally, a few days ahead, we have somewhere between 100 to 150 people buy their tickets. So yeah. if you are procrastinating, stop. Right, <laughs> right now, go to... Uh, NTXCMC, that stands for North Texas Catholic Men's Conference, dot org, or if you're driving, you can remember this, catholicbrothersforchrist.com. Mm -hmm. Either place, the registration pops up, register, get your ticket, and, uh, and we'll have a seat for you. We have incredible speakers kicking off is Bishop Burns, and uh, he is so excited about the turnout and the people that are coming. Then we have Patrick Coffin coming in from California. Uh, of course, he was scheduled last year, and his father passed away, so we're excited to have him this year. And we have Father Mitch Pacwa. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be power-packed. Uh, we've got adoration. We've got – and the conference starts at 9, but at 8 o'clock there's a mass. So come early. Registration starts at 7. Uh, we'll have coffee and donuts. Come, come to mass at 8. We'll have mass. Uh, we're going to sing a Divine Mercy chaplet after that. Then we officially start at 9 o'clock. You're the MC. It is just going to be power packed. We'll be done by 3. Mm -hmm. So there's not a man out there. And if you're a wife listening, this is the time to sign your husband up. Yeah. And it's yeah. $45 today. It's $50 at the door. And I don't think there'll be any tickets left at the door. You know, and Saturday is my work day. I like to uh, relax as much as possible on Sunday and get my work around the house done on Saturday. So some guy's thinking, you know, I got work to do. I got to do this or that or fix this. You know, you get out of there at 3 o'clock. You got the rest of the day, buddy, okay? So just come and dedicate those six hours to building yourself up and other men. Because, you know, iron sharpens iron. NTXCMC. Uh, .org is the website. I was over at Most Blessed Sacrament Parish in Arlington on Sunday, and I was inspired to say, as you know, selling raffle tickets and talking about Catholic radio, this is a difficult time in the church, you know, and we probably all have friends or family members that are saying, you know what, I'm cutting and running. I'm out of there. I'm not going to be Catholic any longer. And the message I said was, you know, I'm going to die Catholic, and uh, you know, I, I'm not leaving. And I and I and I think that's one of the messages that uh, that that men and women need to say is that, you know, I'm I'm not going to abandon the church. I want to learn. The, the faith and I want to strengthen other people and there's more there's so many reasons to uh, 
uh, be strengthened in our faith rather than considering cutting and running, right? And the theme is strengthen your, strengthen the brothers. And yeah. we, we got that directly from Bishop Burns a year ago when he was complimenting what we were doing and said we need to strengthen the brothers. And that was before all the stuff that has happened this year. And, again, he's our kickoff speaker, uh, and he's on fire for strengthening the brotherhood. And it is that's a great reason we have. We're going to have a sellout. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That whole church is going to be filled. And so, gentlemen, if you have not bought your tickets yet, please go to ntxcmc.org, as in North Texas Catholic Men's Conference, ntxcmc.org. Real quickly, Bob, uh, there's the talks, and, you know, that's sometimes the, uh, a big draw. But even more important than the talks is the fact that uh, men can adore the Lord during that time. They can receive the sacrament of reconciliation. There will be some time for praise and worship. Up, uh, lunch, <laughs> Chick Fil A again. Yeah, Chick Fil A. So that's right. If you didn't get enough year. this morning, so uh, those are. I mean, there's a lot going on in six hours, isn't there? there? Is. And it's going to be power packed. And the other thing is, you'll meet other Catholic men and be able to to build a bond. And one thing that we are. This is our eighth conference, and this year we're going to have resources. So if you're um, coming and you're one or two or three people from a parish and right now we have a hundred par- different parishes represented. Oh wow. Over a hundred parishes. Is that a record? Uh, it's close to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, we will be giving resources that they can go online and go back and start a men's group in their in their parish to, to build the ministry of men. This is not just a conference, it's a yeah. movement. And uh, as we are about to introduce Martha, Dr. Kyle's uh, wife, I just want to remind, and I know Martha would echo this as well. Uh, women, if you're listening, uh, you know, this is uh, the hour when Women of Grace is on. So naturally, you're going to have a lot of women listening. Uh, encourage your, your husbands to go. You know, I, I think a, a man that goes to a conference like this gets more serious. A more serious Catholic man is a better husband, is a better father. I know, you know, we, we'd all agree. We're, we're far from perfect men and far from, you know, Martha would probably say, Dr. Kyle's far from perfect husband. <laughs> <laughs> I know my wife would say that, but you know we 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 strengthen ourselves and we we get to have see some good examples, some good talks, and so. One other thing we need is, uh, and you, if you are a female and you're listening, we need some female volunteers. Okay. And you can go to the same website and just where it says register, it says register as a female volunteer, and um, or lady volunteer. And they help with registration and other things, and uh, we need more of those because of the big, the huge sellout crowd we're going to have. All right, very good, Bob Dwayne. Thank you so much, North Texas Catholic Brothers for Christ. It's the eighth annual North Texas Catholic Men's Conference. Patrick Coffin, Father Mitch Paqua, Bishop Edward Burns. I'll be the MC. You and uh, 800 of your close male friends are going to be there. You don't even have to be Catholic uh, to to go. But we do encourage you to sign up, and as Bob said, it's going to be a sellout. I, it's likely that there's going to be a time when they just have to take the information off the website and say, you know what, we fire code issues here. We can't uh, can't let any other guys in. So, Bob, thank you very much. Dr. Kyle as well, thank you. We're at Mid-Cities Dental this morning, broadcasting until 11 o'clock, 556 West bedford Ulysses Road. Uh, it's sweetie, but I don't think the sweet's going to matter because it's so clearly the, the dentistry office here. There's a big sign that says Mid-Cities Dental, uh, Hearst, Texas, 76053. If you want to put it into your uh, GPS, uh, come on over here, and uh, we want to see you. MidCitiesDental.com. They're a sponsor here on this station, and we want to thank Dr. Kyle and Martha Eberlein, uh for their support of Catholic Radio. And it sounds like you guys are responding and uh, coming out here and making uh, them your dentists like I have done and my wife has done as well. Martha Everline is uh, one of the owners here at Mid-Cities uh, Dental. She and her husband Kyle are members at Good Shepherd Catholic Parish in Colleyville. And she recently went to El Paso and for a mission trip uh, a couple of weeks ago. And she wants to talk about welcoming Christ in the migrant. So, Martha, how are you doing? Good to see you. Great, thank you. Make sure you bring that thing right around there so we can... Uh... All right, so was this a, a parish um, mission that was sponsored by Good Shepherd? Or what, what inspired you to go? Yes, it was a mission trip that was sponsored through Good Shepherd Catholic Community. Yeah, I know we talked uh, before about how this whole issue... Of migrants is very politically charged and there's uh, so much and you know in a 10-minute in interview we're not going to be able to cover everything but I think one thing that everybody can agree on is that you know migrants are people they're, they're human beings and they are to be loved now the politics aside and uh, how many should come in and uh, you know whether the, the wall is built and all that that's not the issue here but you went out there and you actually interacted with some of these folks right yes 
Okay, so tell us about it. What was, uh, how big of a group went and what was your experience? Well, there were six of us that went. <clears throat> we drove down and it was a 10 hour trip and we had a great time. And um, we got to stay with um, the Columban missionary priest. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> we had Father Bob, that was the one who took us around to different locations. And we met with the Border Patrol and we met with um, the, the diocesan um, migrant refugee um, uh, office. Mm -hmm. and they help migrants yeah. and refugees with legal problems, but there's just so many people to help. Yeah. Um, yeah, the one, one of the things I, I love about being a, a Catholic, and that's not to say other faiths don't uh, believe this as well, but I think it's one of the principal beliefs is the dignity of the human person. I mean, the, the moment a human being is conceived in the womb, they should be given all the protections, and the 102-year-old that doesn't have any function left, and maybe they're in a coma, is still a human being, of course, and, and deserves uh, dignity. And throughout the entire portion of the life, regardless of our uh, our state or where we are or, or uh, you know the, the, the church has always said let's just at least treat everybody like human beings right exactly yeah so what was your experience uh, down there did you get to meet some folks uh, what, what uh, anything any takeaways that uh, you want to share with our listeners Sure. we went to different shelters and <clears throat> one of them was at the Annunciation House and um, we were able to uh, serve them meals actually we had a group of 42 migrants come to the Columba mission and mm -hmm. we served them a dinner and we interacted with them and we just had a great time and you know and they just they're so humble, they're just full of humility, and mm -hmm. they're so grateful to, to be here. And it was just really nice being with them and just, you know, recognizing that, you know, they're, they're people. And, and whether they stay or not, that's not for me to decide. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we need to love people where they're at. Yeah, so was, were you working with, uh, was it a government agency? Was it a church? Is the church and the government was, working it, together or what? Well, I think that they probably do some, they, you know, El Paso is very uh, unified in this whole thing. So yeah. they got a lot of things, most things covered, you know, from, you know, meeting the migrant right at the border, going to the immigration, and then from immigration, they get let out, and then they go to the shelter homes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were Catholic, Catholic um, facilities and shelters. And then at that point, um, they they find rides for them. No, they have to have a sponsor to get into the United States. If they don't have a sponsor, they can't. They have to have birth mm -hmm. certificate. If they have kids, the kids have to have birth certificates. So once they get in, they go to the shelters, and then the shelters will call up their sponsors and set up their rides. Most of them were Greyhound you know, mm -hmm. rides. And these migrants, you know, they go from, from El Paso to Washington, state of Washington or Maine. I mean, they have long, long bus rides. Mm -hmm. And then the shelter provides um, food for them to take on their trips because these people jelly sandwiches <laughs> and just filled up the sacks. And so and they get one bottle of water and then they just have to fill it up wherever they're at. Uh -huh. But um, I just found that El Paso was very unified and worked really well together. And I mean, you don't see migrants on the streets or anything mm -hmm. like that over there. So. It, it was, there's a lot of order down there. Yeah, very good. Uh, Martha Everline is my guest, uh, broadcasting live, Mid-City Center. I saw a few people come in. I don't know if anybody got any of the gift certificates yet. Uh, have a given, okay, we haven't given away any of the gift certificates yet. Uh, so uh, I, I'm really surprised. I know some people may be listening, and you're really far away, and you're thinking, I can't go all the way to Hearst. I'm in, you know, Weatherford, or I'm in yeah, DeSoto, and it just it isn't feasible. i got to get to work in five minutes. i got a meeting. Well, that's okay, but if you are able to come out here, we want to see you. Uh, at Mid Cities Dental, where we're broadcasting until 11 o'clock. I still have two more guests that we're going to uh, be talking about Young Catholic Professionals of Fort Worth with Brian Tratcher, and also uh, a pilot named Matt Vaughn, who travels the world uh, in his profession and has had the opportunity to go to Mass in different countries, including China. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, the, the, the word Catholic means universal, and I'm just interested in talking to him about uh, how similar are the Masses. Of course, there are different languages, uh, and just what's kind of the common bond among Catholics around the entire world as we celebrate uh, the universality of our church. Well, Matt will be able to tell us about that. And uh, interestingly, uh, 
Dr. Ebelian was telling us about this Dr. Jackie Clavin. Well, that just happens to be Matt Vaughn's wife. And so it's all interconnected. You guys just kind of uh, worked this out so well. Uh, so come on, see us, 556 West Bedford, Euless Road, Suite E, Hearst, Texas, 76053, between Hearst View and Precinct Line. Uh, the website is midcitiesdental.com. Uh, if you're one of the next four people to come on out here, you can get a gift certificate to Corner Bakery, Chick-fil-A, or Starbucks. Uh, at least $10 each of those gift certificates. Plus you get some food and coffee and fruit and muffins and all kinds of stuff. We don't want uh, Martha to have to, you know, either take all this home with her or, you know, give it to somebody else. Uh, so come on and see us. And again, if you want to buy those raffle tickets for the car on March 8th, my cell phone number is 972-757-2990. Buy five tickets for $100 for a chance to win that uh, Ford Mustang. And at the end of this hour, we're going to do a drawing for five more tickets and two tickets to the Summer Speaker Series event with Father Robert Spitzer on July 18th. Boy, this is like a data dump. There's just like so much information. I can imagine people are like, what? what? <laughs> There's a lot going on. All right, so back to our topic at hand. Uh, this is uh, Martha Everline, Welcoming Christ in the Migrant. It is unfortunate because it's become so politicized, and sometimes even just that word migrant may just be, make people nervous. And uh, it's so cool that, uh, of course, we know as Catholics, we've got to treat every single person with love and concern and compassion. Are you, gonna, are you planning another trip, or what, what's, what's the future hold now that you've, you've been on this one? I don't know that I'm going to go back anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe next year or in two yeah. years. I think our church does it every two years. So I'll just see where, where I'm at at that point. Um, for me, uh, well, I guess what I'll take away from, what I've taken away from that is that, you know, we just, um, you know, I need to, you know, I want to let people know that if you want to volunteer and go help, there's a great need. Mm -hmm. We walked into one shelter and they asked us all if anybody was in medical and nobody raised their hand. And I said, well, I'm in dental. And then uh, the sister that was in charge, she put me in charge of her. Uh, she says, okay, you'll be my nurse for the afternoon. Mm. And I was, you know, look, you know, taking in the migrants, asking them what was wrong with them. And I'm, I'm Hispanic myself, so I'm a migrant myself. So I have a little compassion. And you're fluent in there. Spanish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but, you know, I got to see families. I got to see little kids that were really sick. You mm -hmm. know, we were just giving them over-the-counter medications. But, you know, there's a need. Uh, if you feel, you know, compelled to go and work down there and volunteer, I highly recommend it. Okay. It, was a, it really was a wonderful experience. Is there something, you know, somebody may say, gosh, I want to help, but El Paso uh, in the, you know, these border towns are pretty far away. You know, I, I, I'd like to help here in Fort Worth or in Dallas or work with Catholic right. Charities. Is that is that the first thing you do or talk to your parish or what, what, what's their, their first step if they want to be involved? Well, I think, you know, Catholic Charities, you know, works with the refugees and the migrants. And, I mean, there's there, there's a need for foster parents. We have good friends that are foster parents to a, a Guatemalan young teenager boy whose life has completely changed because, you know, he was able to have a home here now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, out of all the countries, I think I saw more Guatemalans than anything else. Guatemalans and Hondurans. Yeah. All right. Well... Uh, thanks so much, and I want to thank you for everything you do. Whenever you, we have with these live broadcasts, I know you just you, you have so much, and you know I'm kind of surprised we haven't had anybody claim these uh, gift certificates yet. You want to kind of run these down, and uh, I, I figure we'll give people a choice because maybe you like Chick Fil A more than you like Corner Bakery, or you want Starbucks more than Chick Fil A, and so you've got four different gift certificates right. for anybody who will physically come here. And if if we don't give them away, then I have to take them, right? No, oh, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to take them, but. Uh, we do want people to come by and, and say hello and get some food and pick up one of these gift certificates, right? Absolutely. All right. So $25 to Corner Bakery, 20 to Chick-fil-A, 10 to Chick-fil-A, or $10 to Starbucks. And so thank you for buying those and for sure. offering them up. And also the food over here is available. And uh, in the past, you know, we've always had people that have come by and bought tickets. You can come by physically and buy tickets and get into mm -hmm. that drawing. And then if you win, you know, you're here, right? That's right. So, all right. Uh, well, Martha, thank you for uh, all you do. Thanks for being a sponsor. And uh, again, the message here is uh, welcoming everybody as Christ would. And again, that doesn't mean, uh, you know, we're talking about a political solution. We let the politicians take care of that. But as far as just being 
kind to people. That's right. I think that's the key, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank good, you. good, good chatting with you. And uh, okay, um, we continue now, as promised. Brian Tratcher is the database manager for Good Shepherd Catholic Parish in Colleyville. And also, he is a member of the Fort Worth chapter of the Young Catholic Professionals. Their website is youngcatholicprofessionals.org. This is an organization that uh, I have really enjoyed watching grow. I remember young uh, Jen Baugh coming into our studio eight years, seven years ago, when she first started it, one chapter in Dallas, and now it's in like 20 chapters across the country. And uh, I think they're even spreading around the world as well. So, Brian, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, Dave. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. I'm very honored to be here today. Uh, and uh, also, if I can, I'd just like to give a shout out to, to Good Shepherd and uh, also to my family and friends who are listening, uh, especially my mom and dad, my sister Courtney, and my adorable three-year-old niece, Sakura. Hi, Sakura. Uncle B loves you so much. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just so glad to be here. Uh, like you said, uh, Young Catholic Professionals was established in 2010. Uh, Jennifer Baugh is our founder. Uh, absolutely an incredible organization. And uh, I guess I'll speak a little bit just to how I got involved. So I've been involved uh, with the Fort Worth chapter since it was established in 2014. And uh, just, just it's such an incredible organization, Dave. You know, there's really a need, uh, especially in, in this day and age and the times that we li live in for an organization like Young Catholic Professionals. Uh, as you know, we, we live in a world that, uh, you know, our culture is increasingly secular and the workplace in particular can often be a place that is intimidating to people of faith and mm -hmm. even hostile at times to people of faith. And so I think it's all the more important that we have an organization like Young Catholic Professionals uh, so that Catholics in the workforce, and especially young Catholics in their 20s and 30s, which is, uh, you know, the the demographic that uh, that we serve. It's also uh, a play. It's a time when a lot of people are leaving the church. You know, you hear yes. about the statistics about going off to college. You know, Absolutely. generally people are in their upper teens, twenties, leaving the church. And uh, you know, whenever I talk to Jen, I say, "Gosh, well, I'm only surprised it took this long to start a group like YCP." Uh, let Let me ask you, uh, if I may. Um, what, why, why did you join? You know, what, what, was, sure. what was the uh, motivation or what, what appealed to you about this group? Sure. Well, you know, Dave, uh, my Catholic faith has been very important to me. Uh, you know, going back to high school through college, I was very active uh, in the Catholic Newman Center and just uh, being very involved in my faith. That's very important to me. And it's one of my goals, I guess, as part of my path to sainthood, to, to live out my faith in my day-to-day -day life. And that includes in my work, you know. We're called to, to do everything we do for the glory of God, for the glory of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and that applies as much as in our work as, as in anything else. So for me, this is an opportunity to... Uh, to be in an environment where I'm learning more about how to do that from seasoned Catholic professionals and also having those opportunities to meet other Catholics my age in their 20s and 30s, uh, to have those opportunities to, to network uh, and to grow together uh, as a community, as a community of faith, as a community of Catholic professionals. Uh, you know, Jim Baugh, in one of her talks I was watching from a couple years ago when she was speaking to YCP, she, she was... Um, basically uh, quoting uh, Pope, Pope uh, Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, uh, using the analogy of the uh, the rope on the mountain and how you know when you're all together on that rope on the mountain and you kind of support each other to pull yourselves up that mountain mm -hmm. and so it's kind of that concept of us coming together as that, that community of young Catholic professionals banding together to grow uh, professionally and also spiritually uh, you know you have to have those things together and to to really have that community to support each other yeah uh, because it's not it's not easy especially today uh, to live out one's faith uh, in the workplace and so having that that community of support is yeah just and it's so critical I mentioned a time when a lot of people unfortunately leave the faith but it's also a time when young people are making the biggest decisions of their life Absolutely. So who are they gonna marry what is their career gonna be are they gonna go get that master's degree are they gonna you know quit one job and start another I mean the, you know, as the older you get the, Typically, and hopefully, you get a little more settled and, you know, things are kind of set. 
But uh, what better time to rely on not only the Lord principally and the saints, but also a band of brothers and sisters who can support you Absolutely. while you're making these big decisions. And I'm sure a lot of people, I know when I was uh, uh, your age, I was interested in you know marriage. And you know there's a lot of reasons why people would join a group like this uh, for business contacts, for you know perspective, you know, uh, you know somebody that they could court or uh, be courted by, and also you know, of course principally the faith development as well. So Absolutely. what 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 an amazing group. Let me ask you, by the way, Brian Tratcher is uh, with me. He's a member of the Young Catholic Professionals of the Fort Worth chapter and also the database manager at Good Shepherd uh, Catholic Parish in Colleyville. And the website for Young Catholic Professionals is youngcatholicprofessionals.org. You guys have these monthly executive speaker series events. Uh, tell our listeners about that. And maybe yes. Any speakers you remember that may have, uh, the message may have uh, really struck you as uh, poignant or meaningful? Absolutely, Dave. Well, like you said, so kind of our core monthly event is our executive speak speaker series events, and these are free to all attendees in their 20s and 30s uh, who are interested in coming out. Uh, and uh, like you said, we have seasoned uh, Catholic professionals who come and speak at these events. So kind of the typical format. Uh, and by the way, here, here in the Fort Worth chapter, we always start, so for our executive month, monthly speaker series events, uh, which are held on the third Thursday of the month. We start with Mass at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at the St. Patrick Cathedral. And then following Mass at 7 o'clock is uh, when the doors open for people to come in. Uh, there's uh, kind of networking and socializing. There's food and drinks. So you have that opportunity to meet uh, other Catholic professionals in their 20s and 30s and to have that opportunity for network networking and community building. Um, and then at 7.30 is when we have our keynote speaker. And these are seasoned uh, Catholic professionals in the workforce who have had these years of experience. Uh, some of the speakers that we've had in the past include uh, Karen Garnett, who was the former executive director of the Catholic Pro-Life Committee of North Texas, and who's currently now the VP of Community Relations at Heroic Media down in Houston, which is a big pro-life uh, media company. Uh, Charlie Morrison, the president and CEO of Wingstop. I've had the pleasure to meet him. A uh, great, uh, very down-to-earth man. Uh, Bobby Warren, uh, the senior VP at Williamson Dickey Manufacturing, uh, otherwise known as Dickey's. Uh, William Allen from J.P. Morgan. Uh, Tim Ha, the founder and owner of Evergreen Companies. Uh, Nicole Havrilla, the founder and president of Whole Life Authentic Care, uh, which is an, an organization that's committed to bringing pro-life uh, health care, which is rooted in Catholic principles to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, and then, of course, and, and so many others. Yeah, you know, let, that's, let, me, that's, let, let, me, let me ask. I'm, I'm sorry. Brian uh, Th Thratcher is our guest, Fort Worth chapter of YCP. And uh, we uh, there's, there's probably a lot of uh, parents that are listening right now and thinking, I want my son or daughter to get in, involved in that. They're in their 20s or 30s. Of course, that in itself is not enough. But what sure. would you say to parents listening uh, who are saying, you know what, this is exactly the group that my son or daughter needs to go to. How would they gently encourage uh, their son or daughter to, to, to maybe at least go on the website and check it out? Uh, uh, sure. Well, you know, and, that, and that's the thing, you know, it's just... Uh, you know, encouraging and, and supporting uh, their their especially those who are uh, in their later college years or who are kind of just starting out in the workforce. Just you know, be, get involved um, and don't be afraid to, to take that leap of faith uh, and and to step out and into this organization because it, it is such a wonderful community. Uh, the people you'll meet you'll meet are just fantastic. Um, the the events that we have, the executive speaker series events, and getting to to meet new people and just knowing that you're not alone. You know, you don't have to 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 fight this battle alone. You know, being a Catholic in the workforce, you have uh, p other people. You have a support community here, yeah. and I think that's the important the important thing is just know knowing that you you have that and just taking that leap of faith to to get involved because once you get involved with it, you're going to discover. How great. Uh, just a couple of minutes remaining as we continue to talk about young Catholic professionals. Brian Tratcher is my guest, and he's with the Fort Worth chapter. 
There are, I don't know if you know this right off the top of your head, I think there are 17, 18 chapters around the country, uh, and more, uh, from what I understand, there are more dioceses and archdioceses that are uh, trying to get Jen in the group to expand, and of course you can only expand so quickly. Do you have, do you have sure. that number off the top of your so head? So we actually have a total of 19 chapters oh, currently. Wow. Uh, Dallas, of course, was the first chapter established in 2010, uh, followed by the Fort Worth chapter, which was established in 2014. Um, and then we've got like you said, chapters all across the nation now, Austin, Chicago, uh, Cleveland, Columbus, Denver, Detroit, uh, Houston, Jacksonville, New Orleans, Omaha, uh, Orange County in California, Orlando, Phoenix, Portland, Oregon, San Antonio, uh, San Diego, and Silicon Valley in California. All right, let me... And uh, so much more room oh, you know, yeah, for more yeah. expansion. A year from uh, now, if had, you were on, we'd probably be talking about 23 chapters of sure. Young Catholic Professionals. Uh, let, me, let me ask you one last question, and again, I want to encourage uh, everybody, whether you're in your 20s or 30s, uh, an old guy like me, almost 52 years old, I don't have any kids in that age category. My oldest child is 14, so I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I don't, this doesn't apply to me directly at all. YoungCatholicProfessionals.org is the website, and uh, Brian Tratcher is my guest. You know, you and I kind of have it easy in a sense because we work in Catholic settings. You know, I'm in sure. Catholic radio, and so I can go into the <laughs> office and talk about, you know, what I believe as far as moral issues, and, you know, nobody's, it's not going to bat an eye. Not, not, not everybody is that fortunate. Right. I mean, I used to work in corporate America, and boy, you got to pretty much stay silent, and it, it, it's difficult. And so do you ever talk to people that are working in corporate America, or is that ever addressed about how to be, as Jeff Scheffelbein showed, talks about undivided intention where you are not that you have to go proselytizing at work because you know that's not always appropriate sure. but just being a catholic man or a catholic woman everywhere you go and not hiding it or you know what i mean sure. what, what's what's the formula there sure and what i would say dave is really at the end of the day it's just being authentic being true yeah. to who you are and standing standing up for your principles being true to your principles and never allow anybody to uh to compromise those principles be true uh to who you are as a catholic uh, and don't be afraid uh, to live out your faith and don't be afraid uh, to stand up for your catholic values and i think that's the most important thing is just being being true to that which is obviously easier said than done in many situations yeah. um, and that's where prayer life comes in which is you know the other aspect of of ycp you know is growing spiritually not just professionally but again growing spiritually spiritually growing in your prayer life that's something that our our um, our speakers our keynote speakers stress time and time again in their speeches is, is having that that spiritual life and that that prayer life even if it's just five minutes a day um, all right young org is the website uh, now I promised you this would go fast did it go fast it yeah. did it okay did. I told you really the 12 the 13 or 14 minutes would be like a blink of an eye probably a little more than a blink of an eye and just <laughs> one, and just one last thing for anybody who has any more questions like Dave said the the website is youngcatholicprofessionals.org. Uh, for the Fort Worth chapter, it's ycpfortworth.org. And then Christopher Wood is our current chapter president, and his email is christopher.wood at ycpfortworth.org. All right, uh, man, you covered it all. Is Jen listening this morning? Do you know if she's uh, happened to be listening? I'm not sure. Uh, Jen, he did a great job. I think she would do. You're going to get an email from Jen saying, boy, man, you... you you, you got it. Uh, so anyways, thank you so thank much. Thank you so Brian, much, Brian Dave. Tratcher, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, you. also thanks for your work. Uh, the database manager at Good Shepherd uh, Parish in Colleyville. So uh, good to speak to him. All right. With uh, no further ado, Matt Vaughn, pilot extraordinaire and uh, traveler of the world. How are you doing? Good, good to see you. Good morning, Dave. Glad, glad to be here. Uh, Most people morning. don't get to experience the universal church like you do. Do you try to make it a priority if time allows to find a local Catholic church? Is that one of the uh, I, I do. I guess, hobbies, I do. for it, lack it, of a better word? You know, I wanted to say that because um, the nice thing about being Catholic is that anywhere you travel, you know, you may feel like a stranger. But um, you can always find a Catholic church, almost always, and, uh, and you're always home. So when you go there, even a place like China, um, go into, of course, the official church, because uh, the, uh, the unofficial church, uh, the, uh, the underground church, would be dangerous to those members that are practicing that way. But you can go to the, the above-ground church, down to the cathedral, and you can worship there. And you'll notice that on the screen where they have the readings, the readings are the exact same readings in your USCCB mm -hmm. schedule, and uh, so all over the world, everybody's reading the same readings you are, 
If you were to go to, and I know you said you don't do this, but if you were to hypothetically go to an underground church in China, you said that you're putting the, the people at risk because they know it's underground. Would you also be risking your ability to come back? I mean, would that be like a criminal offense? You know, uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably okay. would be a, a problematic thing, and, and you, know, you wouldn't want to blow anybody's cover with yeah. that because, I mean, the underground church is, is in, a, in a bad spot. All right. Tell me, um, you know, because we don't have a lot of time, but maybe some of your experiences, maybe some things that surprised you, some of your play favorite places to visit as far as churches. Uh, I know and this is very intriguing. Well, you know, uh, I, I found uh, in Asia specifically, because Christianity has not penetrated Asia the same way that it has penetrated, you know, of course, Western Europe and even South America. But it's interesting to go to a place that has, uh, you know, a church that's well over 100 years old in Asia. Uh, with the missionaries that, that founded it, and it's a you know beautiful church. One of the things that they do over there is they they pre prevent catechesis, so they prevent people from teaching the faith, and then they pre prevent people from uh, rebuilding and repairing churches until it becomes politically embarrassing. And so, for instance, this uh, one one church that uh, that I went to in Beijing uh, had been renovated specifically because the Olympics were coming, they were going to have the world coming there. So that, that church is in you know, very very good repair, and it's interesting that right around it are all these high-end stores from, you know, that we would all recognize uh, in the West. You know, and then there it is, is this, this old cathedral built in 1904, which is, I think is the second or third iteration of a church uh, there in that spot, you know, because of you know, revolutions and wars and things burning down and things like that. And, and there it is, and to go worship there, and it, it's, it's beautiful, St. Joseph's Cathedral. Mm there in, uh, in Beijing. What about, we hear about the emptying churches of Europe, you know, you mentioned France and I think maybe some other European countries as well. Do you find that, that when you go into, I don't know if you ever go to Notre Dame or some of the churches I, in these I European have, countries, do you find it's uh, it's a little distressing because there aren't many people here and the, the people that are there, you know, are in their 90s? Or what's your experience? What's interesting about Notre Dame is because it, it's such a cultural icon. It's like the number one thing to see if you, if you look on the websites of the things to see in Paris. You'll go see the beautiful Notre Dame Cathedral, which, by the way, was used as a stable uh, during the French Revolution, um, and so it was defaced. And then, you know, some of the saints' heads were chopped off of the of the, you know, edifice outside, and then somebody saved them so that they could be put back on it after the revolution was over. Um, but you can go to confession there in like six, seven different languages, mm -hmm. uh, and it's really neat to have a priest that speaks that many languages, and you know, you get through the confession, and it's fine. Uh, many places in Europe seem to have a small, devout uh, population in a in a formerly devout country. Um, but you know, it's hard it's hard to gauge the faithfulness of of the general populace. But I think they're very proud of their culture and about these churches. You know, they're proud of their culture. But there are many, seems to be not many people that are practicing. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you get to talk to people? I know there's the language barrier, but uh, when people find out you're an American or you're a, a, a pilot or what have you, do, do you get to kind of get a feel, the lay of the land from well, the people's perspective yeah. at all? I think, you know, people are very friendly. They're very sweet. And, they, you know, it, it mass is mass in whatever language you are. We'll, we'll say that I was also traveling with, you know, similarly with the military in, in Korea. And I uh, went to mass in Korea, and of course it was in my, my naval officer's uniform at that time. Uh, and the, uh, the chief of staff for one of the, the Korean fleets invited me afterwards to a, uh, a potluck dinner. So, so, uh, <laughs> Get some was, good food around the world, huh? Yeah. Really enjoying this conversation. So yeah, Matt, what else did you want to say? I just wanted to you know, mention my wife, uh, Jackie. Uh, she's Mrs. Vaughn, but she's Dr. Clavin, and uh, she works with uh, Dr. Everline at... Uh, uh, Day Spring Dental up in Bedford. Yeah, take a minute uh, and just talk about that relationship as far as uh, the Mid Cities Dental and the Day the Day Spring Dental and how that all came about. And we, maybe you know, people well, are in the Bedford area. My wife's a, a mother of four, and uh, and she uh, she started that practice and uh, ran it for for many years. And then uh, she and Kyle uh, they came together and worked together a few years ago. And okay. So uh, I'm sorry, Doctor Everline. Apologize. He's a good friend of mine. We hiked a lot together, but. Um, they uh, they run a practice, two practices in in uh, separate locations. One's in Hearst. This one's mid cities in Hearst, and of course uh, Day Spring uh, up in Bedford. So they both uh, both practice at both locations. All right, and we do uh, appreciate everybody supporting uh, our sponsors and Mid Cities Dental, Dr. Kyle and Martha, and uh, also his new partner, Dr. Jackie Clavin, and also all of our guests, Brian and Matt and Bob and uh, Dr. Kyle, for coming on with us and. Um, let's see. You know what? 
Um, that's going to be it. I'm out of time. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> uh, other than if you need to get a hold of me, just email me, davepalmer at grnonline.com. Thanks for listening, and thanks to MidCities Dental. Dave Palmer signing off, and thanks to Olivia Franklin for all the great work that she does here as well. Uh, and we'll return to regular programming here on KTH 910 AM. God bless you.